Welcome to this week's Speak Spark. Our special guest today is Vince Pacente. And Vince, you have spent the last eight months really diving into how to create a breakthrough out of chaos. And I want to just turn it right over to you. You've had a lot of personal experience in how to do that. So give us, start with a little background, if you would, about how and why you are qualified to speak on this topic. Well, it's funny. Hey, Katrina, good to see you. Uh, I would say the background has everything to do with what not to do in chaos. <laughs> you know, because, you know, I went from recreational skier to the Olympic Games in four years, right? So at 26 years old, I had this idea. Uh, I'd raced in luge. I quit. I was frustrated. I thought, well, I want to go to the Olympic Games. So why don't I just try? And I figured it out, right? I figured out how to make the Canadian ski team and march in those opening ceremonies of the Olympics. Uh, at the Olympic Games, not only because I put together this formula that I've been sharing with franchises about how you reach a goal, you know, there's a whole sequence, the five C's, you clarify the vision, commitment, consistency, confidence, control, and you're on the room and you're in the Olympic Games. And then I show them the video of the final run of the Olympic Games and I hit a bump, right? And so in the, that final run, I hit a bump, dropped down to 15th place, no second chance. And then what the audience sees in that presentation is inspiring. It's not just, you know, achievement. It's also enjoying the journey. And I talk about my dad and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's the full package, right? And then uh, after the Olympic Games, after that hitting the bump, I was lost. I mean, there was... Uh, uh, and I don't get into this in my talk, so I'm glad we're having this conversation because it's just the real deal that when we set our mind to achieve something and it happens, uh, you, you then, uh, what, what's that movie where she's lost in space and she's just floating away from the spaceship? What's her name? Uh, she was, uh, George Clooney was the other side. What's, what's her name? Oh, I don't remember. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's okay. I think it's called uh, space Sandra or... Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock, right? So she's in that space suit. And she's just flying around in outer space and looking at the earth and not, you know, and, and that went, that's exactly what it feels like. That's exactly what it feels like to just be untethered and not know uh, what the purpose is. What am I doing? And so... Uh, 18 months after the Olympics, I had a chance to give a speech. Actually, somebody canceled a networking breakfast. It was a free thing. But they said, well, tell your story, whatever. You know, just uh, we'd love to hear what your story about your Olympic experience. I went, OK. Four people came up after that presentation and said, you got to do this for a living. So I call those uh, soul taps, right? You get a little soul tap on the shoulder. You say, pay attention, right? The, the soul tap may not have a specific message, by the way. It might just be, pay attention. And so uh, if four people told you to go to a movie, you would go, all right, I'll, I'll see the movie. And then you go, oh, that's why, you know. And so this whole journey to get into the speaking business, which was my strategy. I was going to win the Olympic gold medal and then uh, go on to be a speaker and I placed 15th. So the phone wasn't ringing. And this whole notion of starting over and just doing it all over again, it's like, I don't feel like starting over again. Uh, but that's the human condition, right? You get to a, a good idea, won't go away. It just won't. And so became a student of the platform, how to grow and, and be better at this. And as you become a student of your craft, you get better at it. Or if you just show up and hope it works out well, you're not exactly a student of anything. <laughs> You're just crossing your fingers. And so to, to be proactive in that sense is something that uh, I learned along the way. And those five C's I mentioned were very, very applicable. How do you get to the Olympic Games? How do you increase sales? How do you build your franchise? How do you grow your business? How do you get people engaged? How do you have a new hire that doesn't know how to clean his own room to <laughs> take care of your, your franchise location, right? So that whole message and was really applicable. Ended up working to end up in the Hall of Fame for speakers, right? With Zig Ziglar and Og Mandino and, and other dead guys. But anyway, so to be in the Speaker Hall of Fame is great. And then uh, the New York Times bestselling list, this formula works. And then 2007 rolled around. And then, uh, then it got ugly. <laughs> Anyways, I'm talking too much. <laughs> 
Well, um, I, I never get tired of hearing you talk, Vince, first of all. So uh, whether that's on the platform or just over, over breakfast in a, in a cafe in Boulder, it's always great to, right. to hear your right. stories. Um, so tell us a little bit more. Your, uh, I think it was your second book, The Ant and the Elephant. Is it your yeah. second or first book? Yeah. So let me, yeah, I brought it here. This is my visual aid. So instead of having a PowerPoint presentation, you just, the slide comes yeah, up. So we, and yeah. Out. Hold it up so we can see the title. There you go. Yeah. The Ant and the Elephant. The Ant and the Elephant. Well, this book was inspired by a speech by, I heard way back. Dr. Lee Poulos, and he found that in a second of time, your conscious mind processes with 2,000 neurons, while your subconscious mind is processing with 4 billion neurons. So 2,000 neurons are consciously aware of what I have to say. We're having a conversation. You might be thinking back to that little lunch we had, or breakfast, was it? In breakfast. Boulder, and we just hung out. And whatever your conscious mind is processing with, plus you're looking at me thinking, man, he looks like the old man from up, you know, <laughs> whatever you're thinking. And so that's the conscious mind. But in the same second with 4 billion neurons firing off subconsciously, who's in control, right? The subconscious mind. The ratio of activity between the conscious and subconscious mind is the exact same ratio between an ant and an elephant. And so the, the concept rolled into my head and then I went, wait, that could be a book. That could be a parable. That could actually roll out the formula that I used to get to the Olympic Games and replicated this over and over and over again to say, how do you establish an emotional buzz goal, that clarity, and then how do you accomplish that through those five C's of, of a different level of commitment? And what can you do consistently but the competition is not willing to do? And, how do you build confidence when you don't have the experience? Because confidence comes from experience, right? And, and then the control, what can you control? But you can control, control what you bring to the environment. So that formula was just so powerful. And it unfolds in this parable about an ant wanting to get to the oasis. And the elephant goes, I don't want to go to the oasis. <laughs> like it's the subconscious mind. So the ant, you know, the ant says, I want to go west on the back of the elephant. But what if the elephant is headed east, right? So you can intend on going in a direction all day long, but if the elephant's not going in the same direction, you're not getting there. And so this alignment of your ant and the elephant is critical, absolutely critical. And so that's been the power of that book. And it's just LeBron James quoted it in Sports Illustrated. FedEx uses it uh, as a leadership tool. Uh, DuPont has used it in their safety protocol. I mean, it's, it's an interesting life that it's taken of its own. It's great. It's just such a great visual when you just think about, you know, it just, I, I feel like it, for me, it totally brings that, the message home that, yeah, right. you know, here's this little tiny itty bitty ant and here's this huge elephant. One's taking the, taking us in a different direction. So, yeah. 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 Willpower only goes so far and it's that subconscious mind that needs to be aligned. Okay. That's a good idea, but how, and yeah. that's, that's a, that's a key thing. To make yeah, that happen exactly so um talk to me a little bit about like what uh, the roadblocks that stand in the way of our conscious and subconscious mind and and our you know our intentions yeah. like there's either external or internal roadblocks so the uh external roadblocks is one thing somebody can be a naysayer um you know two kinds of people the kinds of people that ask questions and some kinds of people that make statements right the ones that make statements, you know, when I was ski racing, they said, what are you up to? I said, well, I want to ski in the Olympics. Them knowing I, I didn't ski race going, oh, that's nice, right? <laughs> that's a statement going, yeah, right, right? You're off the rocker. But others would ask a question, which is, how are you going to do that? So to be in that category of the question asker and surrounding yourself with people that don't make judgments. What, what is the Walt Whitman quote? Um, uh, be curious not judgmental, something like that. You know, it's it's to be curious along the way uh, is going to get past those roadblocks that are external. The internal ones, those are more insidious because they, they camp out in your brain. And one technique that is in the ant and the elephant is the ant has a conversation with the subconscious mind, the elephant. When a negative thought appears, the ant says to the elephant, thank you for that thought. I mean, there must be a reason the subconscious wants to protect you or have an old pattern play out or whatever. But then the subconscious, the conscious mind, the ant says, thank you. That's not part of my vision. 
And then there's this pivot that happens onto what's called the emotional buzz, which is not just where you want to go, but what does it look like, taste like, feel like, all the five senses and the emotion attached to that. That's an emotional buzz. And when you go from that negative self-talk and you recognize, hey, that's not taking me closer to my oasis, that's taking me further away, that will supersede that negative talk to the degree that the pattern is eliminated and then you could just keep marching towards that direction that you intend on doing where the ant and the elephant are headed in the same direction. So I love that. Will you repeat what it is you say to yourself? I say thank you for sharing. I don't know uh -huh. who, who I'm thanking, but uh, but, but what, yeah. what is it that you recommend? Okay, so first you got to recognize that that this is not taking you closer to. So right. if that negative talk is not taking you closer to your goal, right? Then the ant, the conscious mind says, "Thank you. That's not part of my vision." That's my, not part of my vision. And yep. then you go through the five senses and the emotion. I like I like yours better than mine because mine is kind of like just a, like putting putting that uh, negative voice off, saying "Thank you for sharing," but saying "Thank you." That's not part of my vision. At the same time, restates, re it brings me back in touch with what my vision actually is. Absolutely. And the experience of that. So, uh, you know, having a vision, I, I think it's, I, I wish we had a better term than vision, like have a be better experientialization. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's to experience the entire thing rather than just see it. Like, what if you could smell it in your imagination? The textures associated with the, the trophies or the, the handshakes or the hugs or remember hugs? <laughs> Anything <laughs> yeah. like that. So, yeah. Sad but true. Um, awesome. Well, I really appreciate that, Doug. Let's talk about the interplay between curiosity and creativity. Yeah. And and then we're going to bring this part of the conversation into what we started with, which was breakthrough, right? Like, so yeah. we've got all this chaos and yeah. um, we've all experienced chaos in our lives many times in many ways. You have your stories. I have my stories. Right. We all have, have our own uh, experience of that. Globally, we are, we are all collectively moving through, you know, extraordinary chaos. Right. How do we how do we create the mindset that this is a breakthrough? Yeah. OK, let's talk about breakthroughs, because I thought I had it figured out. And, you know, when 2007, 2008 rolled around, I, I had short all my I, I made more in an hour than I made for an entire year in as an executive director for the association for luge leading up to the Olympics. OK, so I was on. Fuego. <laughs> I mean, it was just going so well. And then I had a, a book coming out and the book was lining up to be a New York Times bestseller because I had pre-sold a bunch of books. And I thought, wait a minute, this is all just going to run away. It's just going to be awesome. Then 2008 rolled around and the, my book, The Age of Speed, became so irrelevant to people. They don't want to know what to do in a world that's going faster and faster. They want to survive. Right. right. And I was in the same boat as you probably were as well. I mean, this global recession, massive recession, was such a, a, a setback that the chaos that ensued from that had me eventually really, this took me years to figure out that there's no linear way out of chaos. <sighs> When you want to achieve a goal, and you can go through those, think you can go through those five C's. We'll clarify where you want to go. Commit to it. Consistency, confidence, and control. Follow the ant and the elephant. I mean, it works, you know. And it was not working for me personally. I, there was a there was a, a period of time where I was just fighting for air financially. There was one point where there's nothing in the bank account. There was no speaking engagements. There was no clients. There's no consulting. I had $7.25 of quarters in my vehicle. And the only way for me, because it was on empty and you know how you can down push your luck a little bit. It was to the degree that I had to pull in, pull all those quarters out and go up to the front because I there was no credit card that was going to work or anything like that. And there were two uh, um, friends who who were at our kids school the one the kind of friends that talk a lot to each other about you when you're not there that kind of friend and uh and they're just standing right there and I'm pushing seven dollars and 25 cents and quarters across the uh the counter to buy gas mm -hmm. right 
And uh, it, 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 there's moments like that where you're in so much chaos. There's no clarity, vision, commitment, consistency. There's no linear way out of chaos. And so, as you mentioned, the creativity and curiosity was eventually a formula that I pulled together for a book that's actually coming out October 5th, 2021. It's called The Earthquake, Your Journey from Setback to Breakthrough. And this is a sequel to The Ant and the Elephant, actually. The Ant and the Elephant have an earthquake, and then they tend to, they in the story realize the way out of this chaos is to first understand that they need to get on the same page. They need to figure out how they're going to go in the same direction and align with each other. And then the, um, the then that that interplay between curiosity and creativity has everything to do with how you're going to move forward. Uh, and you know what I realized for all of us when we go through a um, a massive earthquake of your own could be divorce. It could be cancer, right? Obviously, it could be bankruptcy. It could be all sorts of things is to let go. Uh, we can be so dialed in on and I was so dialed in on this linear methodology. If I got to the Olympics, of course, I could get out of this. And it wasn't until I started to realize that it was through letting go open loop thinking versus closed loop thinking, not being locked in your bubble and saying, well, this is the way it is. 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 That's insanity. <laughs> It's to be able to have open loop thinking and then be creative and curious. Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? And something will get traction and pop you out. And so I wrote the book, um, The Earthquake. Uh, and, uh, and then the pandemic hit. <laughs> and sure enough, I mean, it's, it's, it's how I, from the get-go, from the absolute get-go of this pandemic, which I thought would last two weeks, by the way. <laughs> Me, me as well. Me as You're well. Really? Two weeks? Yeah. yeah, 14 days, we're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but anyways, I decided to push out value. I'm good at presenting on, uh, online. I'm, 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 good, I'm good at giving a message that's in a very tight period of time, like less than two minutes. So I was just pushing out these videos. I'll do one a week for two weeks, one a day for two weeks, and just, you know, turn these out. You know, 180 videos later, whatever it is. <laughs> I was just got. I took a couple days off here and there. It was a little much, but to turn out something that has value for people that inspires them to go, hey, there's a breakthrough I can work with. Uh, it's around my brand. Start every video. Here's your breakthrough for today, and end it the same way. We got this. Learn that from Walter Cronkite days. You know, end it where that's the way it is. You know, so whatever <laughs> the, 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 your open and close is has to do with your brand. And then the value inside of that. I mean, um, and was there compensation for any of those videos? No, but you know what they've done? They've created brand awareness and there's phone, the phone rings. Yeah. People, we just worked together yesterday yeah, right? <laughs> with one of our franchise clients because they needed it, right? Exactly. So um, similar, similar thing occurred over here. My brain's trying to go in a couple of different directions here. So, so bear with me. I'll just say we did, we had a similar experience which was that we immediately went, we had, I, I laugh and say I had about 45 minutes of depression when we watched all of our business for the entire year cancel within a 10 day period. And I think I was in fetal position for about 45 minutes. And then I, you know, like you, I thought, well, wait, we've got all these great people who these experts like yourself who have such valuable nuggets and, and so much wisdom to share with our franchise clients at the franchisors and the franchisees and we can help so we went into here to help mode and we just started creating lots of free content for the last six eight months to just really try to help those brands that are struggling what I, the other thing i wanted to say is we will put it in when we post this video on the franchise speaker site we'll put a link to your video series so that anyone who's watching this who wants to take a look at those really really valuable short, short segments. I don't know. What's a better word? What do you call them? They're like, I call them breakthrough videos. Yeah. Breakthroughs. Yeah. yeah. Breakthrough yeah. spots, whatever. So yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. It, okay. Well, you know, and Katrina, you, you, I think we helped each other actually along that because we were instantly in let's provide value mode and then taking other guys like Troy and Ford and, and uh, Scott 
who were also very proactive in saying, okay, what can we do? And then Jeff uh, as well, uh, Civilico, is that how you say yeah. your last name? Yeah. Uh, anyway, that I remember that fondly because we were all in that mode, how can we help, right? Because yeah. yeah. it's what we do. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you this, and don't tell your clients this, but it feels the same whether we get paid or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we yeah, no, I get it. I get it because um, uh, I learned very early on when I started my business and I start, started the business in 2009, by the way. So when you were referring to the catastrophic, yeah. uh, you know, kind of crumbling of everyone's businesses in the speaking world, I was building a business. Yeah. So I always laughed and would say, people would say, well, what's it like to start a business in this economy? I'd be like, I have no idea. This is all I know. So every, right. every win I get, I'm, you know, I'm totally jazzed about it. I, well, I don't. Yeah. yeah. And also you, 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 it's a $10 billion bit, bit industry that went to $2 billion. And so, okay. You had $2 billion to work with. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, it's this, it, it's so obvious that there is a need out there. You got to be a, a drink of water in the desert, right? If you can provide answers and solutions that will provide that something they need today, uh, that's an essential piece. And that's why we're doing this segment. I mean, yeah. there's people seeking breakthroughs, uh, yeah. whether it's a franchisee who's, who's staring at the wall going, how am I going to run my business when I can't open my doors? You know, so, you yeah. know, there's, there are ways there, you know, in this Olympic journey, what I learned is to do what the competition is not willing to do. Right. Everybody's trying to do what the competition's not doing. What is your competition not willing to do? And in that space, in those gaps, you will find massive advantages for your business. Massive. I think about that all the time. I hear your voice in my head. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing, but you know, there are times where I'm I'm just feeling like my energy's sliding or something. I was like, oh, I don't really want to take that on. That might be, you know, that's just that's just too complicated or there's too much going on. And I hear, do what your competition's not willing to do. And, uh, you know, just step into it and do it anyway, right? right just right. do it anyway. It's not as hard as you think. I just had a conversation maybe an hour ago, uh, a fellow speaker checking in, what are you doing? What's working? You know, he's kind of desperate. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, he brought up these videos, these daily videos that I'm doing. He says, man, I don't know how you're doing that. I just don't know how you're doing that. And I'm, I was thinking, well, I'm just doing it. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, yeah. So it's a little bit like some of the journeys I've been on. Let's talk about... Uh, what actions um, are necessary to get traction when you get stuck, you know, when you get in that mindset of, I can't, I don't know which way to go. I've got yeah. too much chaos. I'm totally overwhelmed. Yeah. What do I do? I, 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 Seth Godin's, one of his books, I think it was called Letting Go or Quitting, one of the two. And it, it's really apropos there. Some things just aren't working. And so there's two ways to look at this and you can get locked in on, on, on one over the other. If you're going to have to put a bunch of lines in the water, if you're if you don't know where the fish are, right? Some lines are deep, some lines are higher up. And, uh, and but if you've got something, then you focus on that one line that's working. Um, the other day I was challenged by a business associate. I'm part of a mastermind group of presidents of companies. And uh, he said, Vince, it, it looks like you're trying to push a bunch of wheelbarrows uphill. And that, that may seem like the optics of it because the speaking revenue piece, there's less engagements happening. There's, they're, they've gone virtual, obviously. There's this catatonic theme going on out there. I don't know what to do. You know, it's like, okay, we'll help the ones that want help. And, uh, and, but I am, it, it, the optics are I'm doing a bunch of wheelbarrows uphill at the same time. B2C, with business to consumer, business to business, uh, radical safety, making, and I'm going with the franchise model, helping franchisees with Zoom communications. All these different kinds of things may have the optics that you have no focus, so you're not going to do well at any of them. Sometimes you have to spread yourself out. Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? You know that movie, um, Field of Dreams, where 
uh, build it. The qu actual quote is build it and he will come. Well, it's been appropriated by the corporate world. Build it and they will come. No, <laughs> you don't build it and they will come. It, it, there's, you've got to build a lot and see what will work. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it's such a Hollywood version of the epiphany of knowing exactly what the client needs or whatever. No, there, there has to be all sorts of things that, that, um, that you test out. And uh, that's, that's the mode we're all in, in this kind of earth, personal earthquake and corporate earthquake and business earthquake. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, uh, let's, we just have a couple more minutes here. And so um, what, what would you say uh, is, is the best strategy for someone who is feeling really overwhelmed and where to start? So I heard you just say, you know, try different things, but what did you say earlier on in, the, in our discussion? You talked about a soul tap. I, yeah. I love that expression. Um, yeah, well, let's let's talk about the spectrum of feeling stuck. Uh, on the far left of the spectrum are, the, are, are those of us who don't even want to get out of bed, right? Who just want to stay under the covers and say, I'm done, right? This is, this is it. I am done. Uh, act, action will create things in motion tend to stay in motion. Simple high school physics. Um, roll out of bed and brush your teeth, right? <laughs> that yeah. Get that action going. And that is so, so critical. On the further end of this, as you start to go towards the center of the spectrum, there's things that just aren't working. And, um, and it can be terrifying where, how am I going to pay my electrical bill? How am I going to, how am I going to pay my staff? How am I going to, you know, <clears throat> it starts with breathing. <laughs> there is a part of the brain called the amygdala. And the amygdala triggers fight, flight, or freeze. And none of those have anything to do with peak performance, right? right. They have to do with a stress response. And that's why people don't do well in front of speaking to bunches of people because they've stopped breathing or they're breathing shallow. The way you trigger the amygdala into fight, flight, or freeze is shallow breathing. And if you were to see a saber-toothed tiger, what's that breathing? It's, <laughs> you know, and so breathe deep. So as you move further into the spectrum of uh, where you have some more freedom and maybe you've got some options available to you, then it's that curiosity and creativity and making sure, does this work? Does this work? Does this work? Uh, and I'll couple that with you're not alone. Yep. You, you, it is up to you to reach out to people for help. And it's up to you to reach out to people that may need help. So this has been such an amazing gift to be in a, in a pandemic with Zoom, right? We can talk to each other. We can make eye contact. We can, we can virtually say, I love you. I care for you. And virtually say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how. To, and I'm, I welcome these calls. Um, and then as you move on the spectrum, it's having the luxury to be able to say, okay, that's not working. I'm a little afraid this won't work. Well, just be proactive. Um, fearless doesn't mean without fear. It just have less fear. So pick up the phone uh, and set your ego aside. As you get further on that spectrum, you may find that <clears throat> the spectrum of fear and catatonic behavior. You may find that well, well, that's below me. I should, you know, I I shouldn't speak at a at a Rotary Club. Heck yeah, you should, <laughs> you know, whatever the ego is telling you, you know, set that aside. It's not doing you any favors. Uh, so I would say that's the multi-layered answer to that question. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's great. I'm going to add to uh, Alan Stein Jr., another one of our um, much loved uh, speaker partners that works a lot in the franchise space. He says, when you get out of bed, make your bed, right? Because right. you just accomplished the first thing for the day. Right. right. So you're already setting yourself up for this, this habit of, of completion and productivity. I think that's a, it's a great thing. I have people say, okay, is Vince that guy in the chair? 
And then I have other people say, because part of, for those of you who don't know, when Vince does a live presentation, he does some very, very fun experiential stuff uh, with a chair. Um, and you'll have to watch his clips, which we'll put in the link below as well. But Alan Stein gets known as sometimes as, is he the guy who's always talking about make the bed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's it. The, the chair guy. I get that at the airport. Everyone, well, remember airports. The, the people say, hey, you're the guy who stands on the chair. And I still do it, by the way. My studio is all set up over here. I just did the desk one for you today. But <clears throat> they've got a green screen and a virtual studio. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, it works when you get up on the chair. They're like, what happened next? You know, so, yeah. Yeah. The, you know, I'll leave this with any of the speakers and communicators and leaders on this call communicate where somebody has an experience. Yes. They have to be drawn into this story. They can't just be the observer on the other side of that screen of your story yeah. or of your message. Bring them into that and you will go from a transaction to that transformational message you're trying to get across. Yeah, and we hadn't planned to talk about this and we do need to, to close here, but I do, I wanna mention for uh, our community, for the franchise community that's watching this, Vince does coaching uh, for senior leadership on presentation skills. Uh, we've had brands bring him in and do complete sessions oh, yeah. with yeah. all of their breakout trainers, all their in-house field consultants that were running, I think, 27 different breakouts or something, Vince. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, thanks for that. That was more work than I've done <laughs> in a long time. Yeah. But it was great. I mean, they it, when, when you're able to have people communicate in a way that pulls them into the message. They never forget an experience. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. So yeah. God bless you for doing all you do, Katrina. This is uh, great to work with you. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you, Vince. And for those of us who, who those of you who are watching next week, we have special guest Andy Kaur, who will be talking about excelling under stress. And uh, Andy is a mind-body uh, expert and a really wonderful, wonderful presenter. So please don't miss that as well. And we'll put this up on the Speak site, on the Franchise Speaker site. It'll be under Speak Spark. And um, you guys feel free to download the replay, do whatever you need. Vince, thank you so much. If anyone has questions for Vince, uh, reach out to me. I'll put you guys in touch if there's anything we can do to help you. And Vince, I could just say our clients absolutely love you. Uh, love, love, love you. Ever, I, don't, I don't think we've ever sent you out where a client's been like, eh. you know, every single client is like, that was amazing. That's great. And the, well, one of the hardest things is the following years, they're like, how are you going to beat Vince? That's, that's my goal, actually. <laughs> well, you, you do it over and over again. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Vince. Great to see you again. Take care. Bye.